For men adrift at sea, the two vital problems are keeping alive and attracting attention. On the ocean, a life raft is not a very conspicuous object, even from a distance of only a few miles. All too frequently, the survivors of sea disasters have reported the tragic experience of planes or ships that passed without seeing them. For this reason, our armed services and the merchant marine have gathered together, tested, and adapted a wide variety of devices for attracting attention at sea. Here is one of the simplest, and at the same time, one of the most effective, a small glass hand mirror. Every schoolboy knows that a flashing mirror can attract notice over considerable distances. Flashes from the sun in a mirror this size, four inches by five, have the same brilliance in daylight as a 20 million candle power searchlight. Some modern life raft equipment has already included metal mirrors. But metal, though unbreakable, is subject to corrosion and won't take as high a polish as glass. Notice how images are distorted. Such reflections can't be sent very far. It means that the surface isn't flat enough. The metal itself is too flexible. On the other hand, this single sheet of tempered plate glass with its brilliant polish and superior reflective coating, its inflexible, almost perfect plain surface, its greater resistance to weathering and corrosion by salt spray, is sturdy too and not easily broken. When you flash an ordinary mirror on something nearby, you can see where the spot of light lands. But at a distance, you can't be sure what you're hitting. What makes this mirror different from the one you shave by is the fact that it has an aiming device. The reflective backing is aluminum, deposited in the form of vapor and so thin that a hundred pounds would meet all the requirements for equipping all the services. Over it is baked a protecting coat of black lacquer on which instructions for use are printed. But in the middle is a circle covered only with clear lacquer where the aluminum shows through providing a back mirror in the exact center of which the aluminum has been left clear in the shape of a small cross. This is the sighting cross, through which the operator can sight his target and through which a cross-shaped sunbeam falls on his own body. If the operator faces halfway between the sun and his target, he will see this sunbeam cross reflected in the rear mirror. Now, while keeping his eye on the target through the sighting cross, he can tilt the mirror until the reflection of the sunbeam cross falls exactly on the sighting cross. When he has all three lined up with his eye, reflected sunbeam, sighting cross, and target, he is absolutely sure that his flashes are playing on that target. This is why he knows. The sunlight has passed in a straight line through the center of the mirror and cast a cross on the operator. Whenever two straight lines intersect, as in the case of this sunbeam and mirror, the angles lying on opposite sides are called vertical angles, and they are always equal. When the operator adjusted the mirror so that he saw the sunbeam cross falling on the sighting cross, he was really reflecting the cross from his body to the center of the mirror to his eye. And just as billiard balls always bounce off an edge at the same angle at which they hit it, so flat polished surfaces always reflect an image at the same angle at which they receive it. We now have three equal angles. But the line of reflection to the operator's eye must be a part of the straight line between his eye and the target which he has never let out of sight. And so we have another pair of equal vertical angles making all four angles equal. In other words, the angle at which the sun hits the mirror is equal to the angle between the mirror and the target. 
The operator, therefore, knows that the mirror is flashing a signal directly on the target. Rubber lifeboats are provided with two of these hand mirrors. They may be found in a side pocket, boxed together and sealed in wax paper. The mirrors are small enough to fit into the pockets of exposure suits and life jackets. They should be made secure at once by passing the lanyard around the neck or through a buttonhole. The cleaner the mirror, the brighter the flash. Avoid scratching the surface. If it is trusted with dried salt, dip it in water and polish by wiping dry. Now, if there is a vessel or plane in view, hold the mirror by the edge about three inches from the eye and sight the target through the central cross. If you practice holding the mirror with one hand so that the sunbeam falls on it, the other hand will be free for other uses in a rocking boat. Don't forget that the speed of airplanes may take them out of sight in a few moments. So it is worthwhile to practice quick aiming and steady sighting on a fast moving target. This is possible even for a man in a life jacket being tossed about in a rough sea. If there is no craft visible, watch for smoke on the horizon, for flashes that may come from airplane wings or surface vessels. Sweep your signal constantly along the horizon and in the sky just above it. You may hit a possible rescuer whom you yourself can't see because of the sun's glare, for instance. Since these distress signals can be aimed so that they flash persistently and repeatedly at the possible rescuer, they are easily distinguished from chance glints on the waves. Their light is also much more intense. All air pilots and ship's officers have been instructed to investigate flashes of this sort. The mirror throws a beam of about half a degree and has a range in bright sunlight of about 10 miles, more or less, depending on atmospheric conditions, the height of the sun, and its direction from the target. As long as the sun is visible, even if most of the sky is overcast, signals can be sent to all quarters of the compass. But as the sun gets nearer the horizon, the range gets shorter in the direction opposite to that of the sun. Under good conditions, the signals can be recognized as signals, even by chance observers, anywhere within an area of about 300 square miles. Of course, even greater ranges are possible with larger mirrors. This 8x10 glass is standard for use on larger rafts and small boats. It is made of two sheets of glass, and the rear mirror covers the whole back. It is operated on exactly the same principle as the smaller glass. Its range is half again as long, and its signals, being four times as brilliant, are effective over a greatly enlarged area. With these simple mirrors requiring no accessories and only a little conscientious practice, men lost on land or ice, as well as men adrift at sea, have been given a signal light that works by day, whenever the sun is visible. A signal over which they have complete control. The signaling mirror multiplies their chances of being rescued.